Welcome. I'm Liz Jennings. This is Explore Careers in Healthcare Career Paths on January 24th, 2022. So glad to have all of you on this series. This series is taking place this January while we are highlighting healthcare careers in Minnesota. Governor Walls uh, proclaimed the month of January as Healthcare Month, and there are a lot of initiatives from the Office of Higher Education with CNA training programs, with career force um, events, and also even with Chamber of Commerce and Workforce Development Board events. And um, of course, including all of our Minnesota healthcare um, employers. I so welcome you here to find out more about really what are career paths. And, you know, when, when we hear this, uh, sometimes, at least at first, when I started working for the state of Minnesota, I didn't really know what they meant by a career pathway. But basically, it's any related job that has similar skills in it so that someone could start in an entry level position and then with a combination of training and education and promotion can go from one job to another. So oftentimes this can be a pathway to success with, um, you know, living wages when you engage in any career pathway in any industry, whether it's healthcare or manufacturing or financial systems, IT, doesn't matter. So today, before we really got started, I wanted to point out three different um, specific links on the careforcemn.com slash healthcare page that I think that anyone on this call, um, whether you're a student, whether you're an educator working with students, or whether you're a workforce development professional, and most importantly, a job seeker who's just trying to figure out whether this has any options for you. So on our healthcare page, um, there are three different links. One is view short videos, one is start in healthcare, go anywhere, success stories, and one is transferable skills to healthcare if a fact sheet. So let me show you these. Um, the first one is viewing 78 short videos about dozens of healthcare career options. Yeah, there are 78 on there, um, but they really truly are no more than three minutes long in some cases. And they're put together by our partner agency, Career One Stop. Um, and they really truly have 78 different videos of what is it like to work in ophthalmology? What is it like to be a behavior care technician? What is radiology all about? Um, you know, you name it, diagnostic, you know, uh, support services, IT, uh, bio, biotechnology research and development, you know, all of these options. So, this is one link that you can get to by going to the healthcare page. Another link that I just mentioned, there's a link that says start in healthcare, go anywhere, success stories. This leads you to a web page on Minnesota's Department of Human Services. They have a page which has all of these stories, and this is just a screenshot of six of them, but I believe they have nine or 12 different stories about people who did start in healthcare, and then um, as they, you know, as they went along in their careers, they uh, chose to apply and get a certain position in all of these different fields. So, for instance, this man in the, the top middle there, um, he started in healthcare and then actually went into communications, in communications department for a healthcare company, writing press releases and developing a software, um, social media posts. Um, the woman in the middle transferred into government. You know, she got uh, started working as a behavioral tech uh, technician 
and then put those skills to use working in the government in some of the state agencies that work with um, clients that way. And so you can read all of these stories, but they kind of give you a glimpse. Oh, yeah, I could do that. And working, you know, in healthcare is not just in uh, like for one company or another. It's um, all sorts of different directions. The third link that I wanted to point out that is on this careerforcemn.com healthcare page is a fact sheet. It, you click on the link and it leads you to this PDF, which is again, another way of par, uh, packaging this information. Um, are you looking for work now? Consider a career in healthcare. It's so all of these different transferable skills. So we know, especially like last year, or 2020, I guess it's two years now, a lot of people in the food service industry were laid off indefinitely while we were just trying to understand COVID. And so they were considering um, using their skills, their social, their social skills, their customer service, their critical thinking, their active listening skills, what else could they do? And so we had put together a document which says, you know, hey, these are some of the skills you've got. These are some of the other jobs in healthcare that um, lead directly to using those skills. And so you see also retail sales, cooks and food preparation, information rec record clerks. So we know that medical um, records uses a lot of the, the skills that one would get with, um, you know, on a call center or uh, people who've cooked in restaurants, the, all of the nursing homes and hospita uh, hospitals and clinics are always needing people to work in dietary services. So in any case, that is another one of those resources for you. The speakers today are also um, really involved in these career path conversations, and they too have their own stories of how they had started with healthcare in some of the entry level positions and then um, went to where they are now. We have someone from the city of Duluth um, who works for a workforce development. She's going to tell her story and all of the resources that she has. And we also have someone from HOSA, Future Health Pos uh, Professionals of Minnesota. This is an organization which supports student chapters in high schools. Now, those of you who might not be in high school right now or far from it, I urge you to stay in the conversation because it really is a great look at what's been done to support our young people, but then how you too can take that messaging and even learn from all of the opportunities that they've been doing. So I ask you to stay with this conversation. First, I'm very happy to introduce Shayla Drake of the city of Duluth, who's going to talk to us about some of their career path documents they've put together, and she's going to tell her superhero story. So welcome, Shayla. Hi. Go ahead. All take right. it away. Thank you. Do we have the presentation or will I, you're going to run it? Oh, there it is. Well, hello. There we go. Well, I'm Shayla Drake. I'm a career counselor with the city of Duluth Workforce Development. So I'm going to attempt to briefly explain how to navigate healthcare careers in under 15 minutes. That's going to be fun. So basically what we've tried to do is create a tool to help individuals navigate career options for a very confusing industry, right? And it's almost endless. So I'm going to try to explain some of these things to you as quickly as I can. So buckle up. We can go ahead and go to slide two. So we want to take into account that healthcare industry is extremely stable. Okay, looking in the last 20 years, one in just the state, looking at the state of Minnesota alone, one out of every five jobs on average have been in the healthcare industry. So Health and Human Services has accounted for one out of every five positions on average. And not only that, it has not been affected by industry downturns and recessions like other industries have. Okay, we can go ahead and go on to slide three. Um, historically, there's been a lot of challenges to being able to like navigate the healthcare industry. Um, 
people aren't sure of where to start. They're not sure where to go, trying to figure out even what on-ramps and off-ramps are, which I'm gonna explain that um, a little bit more here coming up in an upcoming slide. Job titles are varied based on where you go. You're called one thing one place, you're called another thing another place. So people don't even have an understanding of what they're even looking for. And then ancillary healthcare positions are unknown hidden entry points. So these are kind of like your stakeout locations that people don't even know about. Um, so you can work in ancillary roles and see what happens in other departments um, to be able to make a career move. And people have no idea that that even exists. We can go ahead and go to the next one. So when we think about on-ramps and off-ramps, historically, when you think of a career path, you think of a straight line, right? So when you think of a straight line, you only have one way to go, there's no flexibility. That makes it really hard because it's very easy to fail that. But if you embrace the theory of on-ramps and off-ramps, it gives you a lot of flexibility. You can skip steps, you can move here, do not pass go, do not <laughs> collect $200, but you have so many options. You can choose your own adventure. I mean, you, you can make life happen, but yet you can also advance your career. So if you think about it that way, when we go to apply, the healthcare pathways, it'll make it a lot easier to say life is going to happen and it is okay because in the world of healthcare, everything is moving all of the time. You can actually jump from one department to the next with, you know, sometimes it's a certification and sometimes it's just some training, right? But the best thing to do is get in, find out, you'll be good to go. You just got to get in and see what, what excites you, okay? We can go ahead and go to the next one. So next, after more than three years of collaboration between like employers and partners and post-secondary institutions, we created this, you know, your stereotypical, your one straight line career path. And it's created by, you know, each profession. So you got like pharmacy, hospital, clinic, long-term care, that's grouped together, and then behavioral health, radiology. And it goes all together because we're trying to keep, get all of healthcare onto one piece of paper. So is it all there? No, it's a roadmap. Because thinking into addition, you can throw certifications in here, extra credentialing. I mean, I could put an asterisk on every single thing and this would go on forever. But that's what's amazing about this is because almost anything in here, any individual can in, at their clinic or at their place throw on an extra credential or two and they're making more money here, they're making more money there. And so it is so flexible that people don't have to be tied down. Uh, it's just, this is a guide map to figure out, okay, how much time do I have to figure out education? Kind of what area do I want to go into? What's my restrictions? What's my limitation? What field do I want to go into? Gives you a really rough guide to kind of start. Once you figure out where you want to go, then you can kind of dig deeper, okay? When you figure out where you want to dig deeper, so let's say we could go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, you're going to find out I know I'm going to pick a career. This career is going to have all kinds of demands on me. Am I going to be a good fit? What kind of people work in this career? When you get it, you're going to get a healthcare or more career one pager. That career one pager is going to give you personality traits. We actually pulled all those personality traits together. These are the common ones, okay? Dependability, integrity, empathy, compassion, you know, concern for others. These are the things that we would typically know, right? So you can look at this and say, okay, do I have all of these things? Great. But guess what? If, if this doesn't jive with you, then maybe healthcare isn't necessarily the direct care side might not be the best place. But the good thing is, is that you can then still dig farther into the healthcare documents. We can go ahead and go to the next slide and they get deeper. This is only the top half because on the bottom half, I didn't attach it because these are technically 
targeted to Northeast Minnesota. So here on the bottom half, you would have actually seen the personality traits and it's gonna give you educational area, Northeast Minnesota, wage, um, hiring, skills gap, like that kind of stuff. So it's gonna give you everything for Northeast information for Northeast Minnesota. Um, let's see. So basically what you would wanna do is it's gonna give you job descriptions, educational requirements, job tasks, schools, wages, and everything else. But the schools, wages, and like need for Northeast Minnesota is the only thing that kind of wouldn't be relevant for statewide. Everything else is still relevant for statewide information. So the cool thing is, is if you come to your one page document and you're like, well, all of the general personality traits seem the same, but when you come to the one pager and there are certain personality traits that pop out and you're like, that's not a good fit. Then you also look and you're like, the educational requirements seem to be too much. I don't like the way the job description looks. It just doesn't seem to be a good fit. You can go back to the drawing board, right? But additionally, as you can see, all of the additional job titles. So if you look under the medical lab technician, let's say you've decided you wanna do medical lab technician. All of those job titles under there are could potentially be job titles for a medical lab technician that you could search for when you put in, want to put in job applications or you're searching for open positions or that kind of thing. Because a lot of times you might miss job opportunities because you're not finding the right, you know, search, you know, under your applicant tracking systems or requisition systems that are putting it in and you're not actually finding the jobs that are posted. So you can actually go to the next job, I mean, the next slide. So as you can see, this slide looks a lot like the last one, but it's very different. Job description is different, education is different, the tasks are different, just the, the layout's the same. So as you can see, it's very, very uniform. You go in, you look, job, education, task, everything looks the same. You can go in and you can actually sit down and find out what do I wanna do? Do I like the job? Do I like the skills? Is this a fit for me? And keep going until you find what you wanna do. And it, it isn't really a digging session. It's just kind of what I like to tell people is, when we get to, um, we can go to the next slide. Do what one of, well, a lot of employees have done, but especially like this person here has done. This is a real person. You would do what she's done. She started out in dietary, did dietary and housekeeping. She sat there for a while and she looked around at what was going on and she said, what do I want to do next? What interests me? What excites me? Then she found out, she goes, okay, maybe I'm going to do cooking. Maybe I like cooking. I don't think I want to do nursing. So she went and she trained as a cook. Found out she hated cooking. Didn't like it whatsoever. So after she trained as a cook, she decided I want to try, I want to try cooking. I don't mean I want to try working as a CNA. So she actually knew she liked the residents. She just didn't think she would like direct care. Come to find out she loved it. Absolutely loved it. Then she advanced her training on to a, to a medic me medication aid. But the cool thing about it is the facility paid through in-house scholarships and all kinds of tuition reimbursement and assistance that's available. She didn't pay for anything out of pocket. So she continued to advance her ability to make more money without taking anything out of pocket. And this is the formula that anybody from high school to changing careers to, you know, immigrant workers to, you know, people, you know, second language, English is a second language. It is, the formula is the same. Get in, get in those entry level positions and find out what excites you. Because you don't even know what jobs are available unless you're on the inside. Like, how do you know that people even work in these government jobs doing these advocacy things unless you are on the inside? How do you know that people have these special marketing positions in healthcare unless you're on the inside? So that's how people find out for themselves. And a lot of people can get a lot of education for free in healthcare by utilizing their educational scholarship opportunities. Um, and then the last slide is basically going back to the one pager when you're in the inside and you're figuring out, okay, I'm at this step, 
maybe I want to change, maybe I want to move, you can just always go back, reference that sheet, and continue to look again. Say, okay, has have things changed? Do I still like the path that I'm on? Do I want to maybe change industries and just kind of reevaluate and look? You can always return to the documents and see if you're still on the path that you were that you were on when you started. So, yeah. That's great. I mean, I can tell you are very passionate about healthcare and working in healthcare and what Tell me a little bit more. What excites you most about healthcare? And I know you've worked in it before you worked years. in the city. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, healthcare for 20 years. I've only been doing, I've been doing it as on the workforce development side for uh, five. So the thing is, is that I've transitioned myself. I started out in high school as a nursing assistant. Uh, my my facility paid for my nursing assistant certification, right? Then I went in and worked at a hospital. The hospital paid for my nursing school, right? Then I went in and got had issues, medical issues. Came and I am now a product of the workforce development system, right? I helped went through vocational rehab services. They assisted me with school. So the thing is, is there's opportunities out there for everybody. So I myself, I'm. I am here because there's opportunities that exist within the healthcare system. Although I'm not nursing anymore, I was able to apply everything that I learned and did to still be effective and help the industry. You can always work and do everything that you learn can be applied. IT, maintenance, food service, like anything that you can think to do, you can do in healthcare. Everything is applicable as long as you have a passion for people and want service we can do it thank you um any other questions from people here they you can type it in um you know when you talk about training i know that of course we've heard that the state of minnesota is offering free cna training but um Shayla, just comment a little bit too about the a little bit more about the facilities um, mm -hmm. clinics that will pay for your training. How do you how it's, do you find that? Is it everywhere? It's everywhere. I'm telling you, it was in Texas when I lived in Texas. It was in Minnesota when I came to Minnesota. It is everywhere. You just have to look for it. You have to advocate for yourself as an individual to seek the career that you want, right? You get in at the base level, you start from the ground up, and you take it one step at a time. You can't expect an employer to get out and say, hey, I'm going to start here in dietary, but will you play for my doctorate? That's not going to happen. But if you start there and maybe baby steps, nursing assistant to TMA to RN, or if you go there and maybe get a huck to maybe business office manager to something like that, it's all baby steps. You do it little at a time until you get to where you want to be. And is it open to all ages? Oh, yes. And that's another thing too. It just kind of depends. Like you can get your CNA certification at 16. It's just getting hired depends on the facility, whether or not the facility has Hoyer lifts and whether or not it's part of their hiring policy. So it just depends on, again, knowing what you want to do and talking to the right people at the right time. We have a question that just came in about St. Luke's, and I'm guessing that's St. Luke's in uh, Duluth. So maybe yeah. the, the the question person and Shayla, you two can they connect. Have, they have program. I can tell you both hospitals up here have different educational opportunities for nursing, whether it be reimbursement programs, scholarship programs. Both of our hospitals up here have different opportunities in different ways. That make them beneficial. Yeah, great. Thank you very much for being here today. I just love hearing your passion for the industry. Absolutely. Um, it's been great. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I'm pleased to welcome Summer Hagee of HOSA, Future Health Professionals. She too has had a, a long history in healthcare and is going to tell us more about her current work 
and um, how she gets people into healthcare and beyond. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I will echo what Shayla was saying there at the end. There is a job for everyone and anyone in healthcare, no matter what you like to do. If you like to play video games, there is a job in healthcare for you. If you like math, there is a job in healthcare for you. Um, and that's what we do a lot of at Minnesota HOSA. So if we go to that first slide, please. Hmm. My wonderful state officer team, I always like to give them a shout out before we start. These are my group of elected officers who help us spread the message and the work of HOSA all throughout the state of Minnesota. So those are my state officers. Next slide. And one of my state officers actually um, wrote a, a letter of support uh, to try to find some sponsors for our upcoming conference in April. And this was her second paragraph in the letter and I loved it so much I wanted to share it today. Because a lot of times people ask what is HOSA and we have a very uh, we do a lot of training about how to talk about HOSA, but I think this just really captures it from a student perspective. So Minnesota HOSA Future Health Professionals is an organization that prepares students to enter the healthcare field. We HOSA students can start as early as middle school, so as early as sixth grade, and it goes all the way through college. And HOSA really provides each member with the opportunity to not just learn about healthcare and health occupations, but to actually engage with healthcare. So we have competitions, conferences, and personal introductions to healthcare professionals. HOSA provides unique experiences to students to empower them to enter the healthcare field as leaders and innovators. We aim to build communities between students and provide them with a space to learn, grow, and develop the skills they need to enter the growing medical field. I thought that was so beautifully written, um, again, by one of our state officers. Next slide, please. So I could talk probably for the entire 15 minutes about just the benefits of HOSA. I will not do that. <laughs> um, but obviously we offer a ton of career information and actual hands-on training opportunities. And I'll talk more about those in just a moment. Um, National HOSA and Minnesota HOSA offer volunteer opportunities and service projects. There is a National HOSA service project every two years so last year and this year, our service project is Be The Match. So we encourage students to learn about uh, becoming a bone marrow donor and if they're of age and are interested to join the Be The Match registry. Obviously, we aim to increase knowledge and skills around various health occupations. And I'll talk about some of those in a moment. A lot of community and industry connections. When we have conferences, we invite actual healthcare professionals to come and speak and also judge so that the students are growing their network while they're in middle school, high school, or college. Offer lots of recognition and awards and scholarships for our students. It's a great resume builder both to get into college if that's the route students are choosing to go or to apply for a job. Lots of networking and communication and leadership development. We encourage innovative thinking. We have a whole competitive event category around medical innovations. And the thing we hear time and time again from students is it has helped them meet new people in their school and at other schools and also make new friendships. We often hear from our students, you know, when they found HOSA, they found their community. They found people who are interested in doing well in school. They found the people who um, like to study and like to do well on tests. Um, so they really met their, their people when they found HOSA. And the next slide. So the competitive events are really the meat and potatoes of HOSA. We offer over 65 competitive events and these are all created on the national level. They range just about everything you can think of from CPR to veterinary science and everything in between. There are skill-based, so students are coming in at a conference and they walk into a room and they're handed a skill scenario, for example, taping an ankle and they will have to do that skill for the judge and they'll, they'll get rated on how well they do that skill. And we also have what we call our knowledge tests. And those are for students who maybe don't wanna do a skill or present their project in front of judges. They wanna take just an online test. And those are things like medical terminology, medical math, medical reading, pharmacology, a whole, a whole group of tests that students can take. And then also that career-based learning. So again, those skill scenarios, learning all about different health occupations. We offer in-person competitions and those online tests as well. Individual and team events. 
some students prefer to work alone, other students prefer to work as a team. So there really is something for everyone in HOSA. And just because you're in HOSA doesn't mean you're gonna be pre-med, it doesn't mean you're gonna be a nurse, it doesn't mean you're gonna be a doctor. We have students in HOSA that want to go on to a career in law. And so they choose their competitive events for to help expand those skills. So for example, research persuasive writing and speaking or medical law and ethics, things that will help them build that skill and knowledge base that they would need for uh, to apply to law school or for a career in law. Here in the state of Minnesota, we hold our competitive event conferences twice a year. We just finished up our midwinter conferences and that was in January. And then we have our state leadership conference coming up April 25th and 26th in St. Cloud. We always need judges. If anyone's interested in learning more, you can contact me. And then we do offer other experiences throughout the year. We had a host of day camp where students got to rotate between eight different health occupations and get to hear from professionals and do some hands-on things, similar to our big fall leadership conference that kicks off our year. And then we do something special here in the state of Minnesota. We have our medical reserve core camp that we host up at Camp Ripley where students are learning all about disaster preparedness, emergency preparedness, and they come out of that certified as a medical resource member. So if there were a disaster, our students could step in and help based on what they've learned and what they've been certified in. And those all lead up to the national um, sponsored international leadership conference held all in different areas of the country every June. That will be in Nashville this year kicking off on my birthday. So I'll be getting myself a cowboy hat and some boots and heading to Nashville for my birthday for ILC. And forming a chapter is actually very easy. It's probably the question I get the most. Well, how can my student get involved or how can my uh, child get involved? It's actually pretty simple. Typically what happens is a student will reach out to me and say, we wanna start a host of chapter here. And the first question always is, have you found a teacher or some other staff member at your school who wants to be an advisor. So students, that's really the first step is finding that uh, staff member at their school who wants to be their advisor. And HOSA is student led. So we really encourage the students to do all of the chapter events on their own. Every chapter has leaders. So the advisor is really there to help with the more administrative things, you know, scheduling a bus for a conference, helping with payment, those types. And then we encourage students to recruit members. Usually that's pretty easy. Um, and then they establish their student leadership team or their office. Every chapter will have a chapter president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. Other chapters do you know, communications, his, history, uh, all types of different things. Then we encourage them to host regular meetings. We do not tell them how often to meet. That is something that they choose as a chapter. And then we encourage them to set goals they want to do some fundraising? Do they want to get involved in a service project? Do they want to do something in their own community? What school events do they want to uh, participate in? And then we also encourage them to create a calendar or a plan of work so all of the members know what's happening throughout the year. And then determine the conferences that students attend. Not all of our HOSA members come to all of our conferences or compete in all of our conferences, but they still get all the benefits that the students coming to conferences get. And then most importantly, we encourage our chapters to have a lot of fun, do dress up days, you know, sell candy at lunch, um, do Valentine's for the elementary school kids. We really want them to have fun and get a meaningful experience out of being in a HOSA chapter. And then the last slide here is just for additional information. Um, you can find information on our Minnesota HOSA website. You can find a ton of information on the international HOSA website all kinds of competitive event information. Our state officer team, which is again pictured there, does a great job on our Instagram. Um, I take on Twitter because I've realized students really aren't on Twitter. <laughs> so I interact a lot uh, just with grownups there. And then there's my contact information as well as my state officer advisor, Lauren, um, who is a past state officer and is stepping in to train our officers all throughout the year. Um, questions for me, I know that was really quick, just give you a, an overview of all of the opportunities available for, you know, sixth grade all the way through college to get more information about a career in health. Thank you. You know, Summer, I know not all high schools or middle schools have 
health sciences classes. I know that's one of the smallest CTE groupings. Um, I'm guessing the answer is yes. Can students still set up a chapter if they find each other? And, you know, even absolutely. if their school doesn't have a program? Yep, absolutely. So I just had a conversation with a mom over the weekend down at Hockey Day, Minnesota. Um, and she, I said, you know, what does Ella think she's going to do after high school? And she's like, well, she really likes sports medicine or physical therapy. I said, she should join HOSA. We have both of those competitive event opportunities. You know, we have host advisors that are social studies teachers. So sometimes not even the advisor has a background in healthcare, and that's okay. That's really for us at HOSA to help them find their pathway and to help answer questions along the way. A, you know, a school can offer anatomy and physiology, and if a lot of uh, if a lot of students really like that, let's form a host of chapters so they get more more exposure to the healthcare field. Based on all of your work with the students, what advice can you offer the adult job seekers on this webinar today about getting into healthcare? I think I would just echo everything Shayla was saying and how I started the presentation. There is a job for anyone and everyone in healthcare, and we say that to our students all the time. Um, uh, we do this really fun um, activity at our HOSA day camp. We give students, they all come and they sit down and we give them a scenario. You're walking through the park and a man starts going into what you assume is cardiac arrest and his, his wife is panicking and asks you to call 911. From the moment you place that 911 call, I want you to list out all of the people that, that, that you or that couple will be interacting with until he's released from the hospital. And they get the main ones. It's Sometimes they forget the 911 operator. That's okay. They get the main ones, the nurse, the doctor, the cardiologist, maybe a surgeon, depending on you know, what happened. Uh, but very often they miss things like the dietary people or the people preparing the meals, the people bringing the meals to the room, the lab workers who are looking at all of this gentleman's lab reports to figure out what exactly happened to him. Um, you know, the cardiac rehab people. So it really gives students a sense of, oh my gosh, they're going to interact with, you know, maybe a hundred different people because he had this cardiac episode. And it was great. The first time we did it, there was a girl in the front row and she, you could see just like the light bulbs go off. She's like, wait, I could be a chef at a hospital. I was like, absolutely. Hospitals have, you know, they have lots of dietary needs. And she was like, that's so cool. I never even thought about that. And you could just see those light bulbs going. So she might not join HOSA uh, because her passion might be in the kitchen, but that's cool that we were able to show her that there is a job for her in healthcare. IT keeping their medical records safe, somebody had a security. Yep. Security, I mean, yep. It's a really yep. great, easy activity. If there's anyone on the call who's working with students or just wants an easy activity to do, maybe on a Friday afternoon, let me know. I can send it's you the. People, like I said, it's like you can go on forever. So if you sat there yep. trying to put healthcare on a piece of paper, mm -hmm. it, you will never stop. Exactly. So we had to at some point come to a stopping point and say, you can apply ancillary healthcare to this yep. as a thought process, an entry point or, or, or whatever, and just know that it's there and know that it exists and know that it's yep. still healthcare. It's still I mean, my first job out of high school was at Old Navy, <laughs> and then I was a, a server and a bartender all the way through college. I never thought I would be the executive director of health occupations, but here I am. <laughs> There's one more question that was put in the chat. Do most employers in healthcare also offer health insurance or health services at a discount? That's funny. No, that is not an applicable thing. Like that is not a blanket thing. Like, oh, just because you work in healthcare, your healthcare costs are lower or you get a discount on your health insurance. Just like every other employer. Depends on what they can afford based on when they go to evaluate their selections and their choices. Yep. I well, mean, yeah. There, there's no perks just because you work in healthcare, you get like a extra discount or anything. It's mm -hmm. no kind of bonus. Versus working at Target or any other retail. <laughs> right. 
you don't get like a <laughs> you know discount on your X-ray when you go in or something. Well, thank you, Summer. Thank you, Shayla. Um, Absolutely. All of this information is really, really helpful to hear. Mm -hmm. I'd like to point out for all of the uh, the attendees on this webinar, a few other career path resources. This is the um, the snippet, the the picture of um, Shayla's document that she talked about, and we have put it and a couple others on our Explore Careers Healthcare page. I just put that link to the Explore Careers page in the chat. So we've got the two in there. You can um, look at them, download them from there. Um, but we also have one from South Central Workforce Council in Southwest Minnesota, Private Industry Council, so in the Southwest part of the state, and one from Central Minnesota, Jobs and Training Services and Career Solutions, the, the career force provider, um, providers in central Minnesota. So let me show you the screenshots for those. This is the one for the South Central Workforce Council. Um, it's very similar to everyone else's, just different infographics. And it does have the information on local providers and local wages, at least, you know, as of about, uh, you know, a couple of years ago when they put that there. Talk about the job growth too in the Southwest part of the state. Um, with the, the infographic also from Central Minnesota Career Solutions in Central uh, Minnesota Jobs and Training Service, again, just slightly different infographics but kind of that same sort of thing. They, um, on their first page, talk about, um, you know, what kind of degree do you think you eventually would like to get? And so these are some of the wages in that sort of educational training area. Uh, let me just reassure you that these pages, there are a couple more pages beyond this. I just took one little screenshot of what they offer. And also this is the guide to Metro College and Career Opportunities in Healthcare through the International Institute of Minnesota. Um, our speaker last week talked about it, but I thought it was just worth putting it into it. Um, it's really pretty recent and it's 30 pages long. So it has a huge amount of information for anyone in the Twin Cities. And I've put the URL in there and I will put it in the chat also for you right now. So please, I hope you go to all of our sites and use that either for yourself as a point of conversation with um, your job counselor, if you're, if you're an adult who's switching careers, or if you're a student or an educator who's trying to look for future paths. I do wanna point out a couple of other things going on for job seekers this week, just so you're aware that there are a number of job fairs, again, in healthcare going on. Um, in Blaine, tomorrow, uh, two days from now, Wednesday, there is an in-person job fair at uh, Career Force in Blaine. Um, also on Wednesday, the 26th in Montevideo, there's a job and resource fair taking place. Wilmer has one on January 27th, a healthcare informational meeting. It's both virtual and in person, depending on which direction you want. Um, next Monday at this very same time, our Explore Careers is all going to be all about the CNA training programs. We will have a speaker from Century College in St. Paul to talk about the program, and we'll have someone from the CNA Training Program Committee who will give us the big overview to it. And then also on our Healthcare Month events page, there's a link to a webinar, informational link to um, Unify Vision Partners who talk about some of their job openings in the Bloomington area. So you can view that uh, video. You can follow the QR code to, to go straight to that. We've got more events happening at this career fair page. We've got so many resources. Please email me anytime for uh, 
quick links to get your questions answered. I hope to help you and all of our job counselors in the Career Force system hope to work with you, whether you're an educator, a student, or an adult job seeker. Please get in touch with us and thanks again to our speakers today. Take care of yourself and see you next week.